Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another video. The lore of World of Warcraft can be very confusing to a new player since there's so much of it, and with how leveling works at the moment, you can never really finish any story, so keeping up with it can be quite hard. Now, I wouldn't call myself a lore master, but I do know a thing or two. So today, I'm going to be discussing the forces within Warcraft lore, and I'll be explaining the cosmology chart as well. It may look confusing, but I'll break it down to make it easier. I will point out though, the cosmology chart comes from the Chronicle books, which are from the Titan's point of view, so it may not be 100% accurate lore-wise, but we'll talk about that in another video. So let's start off in the middle. This is reality, which simply put, is Azeroth and the other worlds that we visit during our time whilst playing. If we zoom out a little bit, we'll be able to see the Emerald Dream, a place which, if you've played Legion, we visited briefly before. It's full of life and nature. Opposite that, we have the Shadowlands, which is where we'll be going in the new expansion. Now, this place is where people's spirits go when they die, and it's full of death and decay, which is the opposite of nature and life which is why it's on the opposite side of this chart. And that rule is how this chart works. Everything that is opposite of each other opposes them. So as we work our way around the chart, I'll let you know what opposes what and what that part consists of. If we look at the top of the chart, here we have light, which uses holy power. And the forces that use that power are the Naru, which we saw a lot during Warlords of Draenor and Legion. The opposite of light is the shadow, which uses Void Power, and the forces that use that power are the Void Lords. Now, we don't actually know much about the Void Lords at this very moment in time, and since this chart was created by the Titans, the only force that the Titans have really interacted with are the Old Gods, which were created by the Void Lords. Over our time in Azeroth, we've encountered a few of the Old Gods, the last one being the Zoth. The Old Gods' true form aren't really part of reality and are in a realm of their own called Nihilotha, which is why they're placed outside of the reality section and in a section of their own. Next, we'll move on to Order. The power that fuels this part is Arcane, and it's the Titans themselves that uses that power. The force that opposes the Titans is actually Disorder, which is led by Sargeras, who used to be a Titan himself, however after seeing how powerful the Old Gods were, he decided that the best thing to do would be to destroy the planets where the Void Lords placed them. Now this was against what the other Titans were doing, so Sargeras needed something more powerful than Arcane Power to try and defeat them. So he started using the Fell, which is what powers his armies, called the Burning Legion, who we fought many times before. One thing to point out, and just to show how Fell is so powerful, is that the Titan is made up of a pantheon, and each Titan has their own powers. I'll go into more detail about the Titans in another video, but the best way to think about them is like the Greek gods, and Sargeras by himself was able to overpower them using the Fell. If you look at it in the long run, what Sargeras was doing would have been for the greater good, as his fear for the Void Lords is rational. At this moment in time, the Burning Legion and the power of the Fell are kind of dormant, since Sargeras is currently imprisoned in the seat of the Pantheon, with Illidan serving as his jailer, after the events of the ending of Legion. The last part of this chart is currently the most important as we move into Shadowlands. First, we'll start off with life. Now, a life uses the power of nature, and that power is used by the Wild Gods, who include characters such as Sonarius, who is the Lord of the Forest and teacher of Malfurion, Chai Ji, the Red Crane, one of the Wild Gods we first meet in Mist of Pandaria, and Ursog, one of the bosses we'll fight in the Emerald Nightmare in Legion. Now, some of the lower we meet in Battle for Azeroth are classed as Wild Gods too, such as Torga and Hyreek. On the other side, we have Death which is something we're not strangers to, especially a certain mage I can think of. The power that death uses is necromatic, and the forces of undead use this, which include people like the Lich King and Helia. Now, in my opinion, these two forces are probably the most dangerous, whereas a lot of other people may think it's light and shadow. The battle between life and death is really the beginning of it all, and it's something that is constantly in conflict. 
We're going to be learning a lot more about these forces during our time in the Shadowlands. Now, the reason why this chart is so important, especially now, is because it is in a very specific order, and having that balance is how everything works. However, with Sylvanas breaking the barrier between reality and the Shadowlands, she's unbalanced that system, which could have some very major effects, and I feel like the ripples will catch up with us, which could be devastating. If you've seen some of the alpha, you'll know that time in particular is very different in the Shadowlands. And you've got to remember that time itself is part of reality, but we're not going to be part of reality when we go into the Shadowlands, so maybe time will be a little bit more fluid there. It's one of many things to think about as we go on into the Shadowlands, and this expansion is going to be an interesting one because it's the first expansion in a long time where we're kind of going in blind compared to the other expansions where we sort of knew what to expect. I'm looking forward to learning so much more as we go into Shadowlands, and I cannot wait to share it with you in more videos.